Hi, I'm Will Reddick, and I'm sitting here in the office of Koro Kenya in Mombasa. And today we wanted to give you a primer on why the economic situation in the world is so screwed up and what are some ways we're working locally here to solve those problems. So I've written a simulation that I'm going to show you and it takes us back about uh, about a hundred years into a village market. And in that market we've got a, about a hundred people that are trading their goods and services together. So here <clears throat> on the simulation you can see in blue the balances, the, the amount of money that each person in uh, the village has. And as they trade with each other, you're going to see these balances start to change. So here we go. So over time, you can see that um, a few people um, are sort of preferred, that some businesses uh, have high demand goods and services, and so they get quite a bit more businesses business than others. And those people with very little uh, goods or services to sell or low demand end up with very little money. So you get this distribution of money in the community. And on the bottom left, you can see this is actually a graph of the inequality in the system based on the, the Jenny coefficient. And the Jenny coefficient, the way it is right now, is something like what you would see in Norway today. It's, it's pretty equitable. And on the bottom right, you can see the amount of trade happening. So everyone's trading. Um, things are going just normal. So now that we've got sort of the situation a, a hundred or even a few hundred years ago, um, what can we do? What's the simplest knob we can turn to mimic the inequality of today? What, what could we do to this village market to start uh, making uh, a few people very, very wealthy compared to everyone else? And the simplest answer to that is to incorporate interest-bearing loans. So what we're going to do is we're, everyone who has very, very little money is going to be able to take a loan out to buy whatever they need from the people who have uh, the most money. So let's let's see what happens there. And we still haven't introduced it yet. There we go. So these very few people who are giving interest-bearing loans are starting to make huge amounts of money compared to everyone else. So instead of helping the economy, these interest-bearing debts are actually doing the opposite. So these businesses that went into debt because they saw it as an easy way to kickstart their business, um, instead they're finding that the debt, the debt payments are too much for them to handle. And so over time, you can see on the bottom right, their trade is dropping, dropping, dropping. Um, the economy is basically being stifled. So these very, very wealthy people now on top are sort of like your 1% that you would see today. Um, those people are now, for the very first time, able to make money off of their own money. So that's, that's the innovation uh, that came about with interest-bearing loans. And it makes very few people very, very rich. So your inequality starts to climb. In the bottom left, you can see the inequality growing and growing to about the level of something like South Africa today. Sorry, South Africans. Um, <clears throat> what you might notice also is that the total amount of money in the entire system is growing because essentially um, these few people um, are acting sort of like banks and they're able to issue more money into the system. Something like 97% of our money supply in the world is created by private banks for profit today. Very few people know that and it's, it's something that um, when you look at the 60 trillion or so in debt in the world and you wonder where did that money all come from because we didn't start with 60 trillion we started with much much less if you go back a, you know a few hundred years so where did the 60 trillion come from it came from uh, people issuing more and more loans and collecting more interest on those loans so um, the question is what can we do to change this and, and really what went wrong um, in the in the first place these aren't evil people, they're not sociopaths, they're not, uh, they're not doing anything uh, out of the ordinary. In this case, it's just math. It's just very, very simple math. They're, they're simply doing what they can, which is issuing loans and making more money off of their money. It's, there's nothing uh, evil about this. Um, it's simply a poorly designed system. So how could we redesign the system? And a lot of people promote the idea of taking away the power of, say, private banks and loaners to create credit um, 
and to issue you know, high interest loans and instead give the power to create money just to national governments. Um, people like, the groups like positivemoney.org are really working on this on a, on a political front. Um, and so I recommend you check out their website. One of the problems is <clears throat> a lot of these people who have a lot of the money are actually in the political class. <clears throat> so it becomes, very, it becomes very hard to change that system. So what can we do at a very local level to try to reverse this damage that has happened to our economies and our communities worldwide? So one solution that has been promoted now for many years and is just starting to pick up steam is the idea of uh, secondary currencies or alternative currencies. So what if all these people in this network, in this simulation, if, this, if these villagers could create their own currency that they could trade with that was backed on their goods and services and that currency was fixed and stable for the community and could act sort of as a buffer. So let's look at the simulation again and see what, uh, what would happen when you introduce that type of currency. So here, we haven't introduced it yet. And all of a sudden here we have. So now you can see a little tiny green speck next to people's balances. That represents their, uh, what we call a community currency. And using that community currency now, instead of <clears throat> going into debt when they need to trade something, they can use this as sort of a barter exchange. Um, and immediately you can see the trade starting to jump back up on the right. And on the left you can see the, the inequality dropping quite a bit. That's because now um, people are less and less enticed into interest-bearing loans. So those people that were making money off of their money uh, now are making less and they're spending it back into the community so you get sort of a trickle-down effect. So again, you can see <clears throat> trade coming back, inequality going down. Um, all of this is stuff that we're seeing on a daily basis here in Kenya um, with a program called Bangla Peza that we hope to spread around to different communities in Kenya. So uh, in a nutshell, this is how a two currency system works. It's simple but fairly elegant <clears throat> and solves quite a bit of financial problems. So for more information, check out our website or, or our Facebook page uh, shown here. Thanks. Bye.